Where is America heading? The political left and right have two different visions for our future. The left wants more government. The right says we should have less. We don't have money for what? You heard the cries of outrage for the people of Bell, California, who discovered that their town managers paid themselves hundreds of thousands of dollars. Shame on you! Shame on you! You were a crook yesterday, you're a crook today, and you'll be a crook tomorrow. Maybe. This week, they were arrested. They used the tax dollars collected from the hardworking citizens of Bell as their own piggy bank. But much of what they did was what lots of politicians do, vote to spend taxpayer money on what they think is important, themselves. They want to do whatever the hell they want. Exactly. Rarely is there such blatant self-dealing as there was in Bell, but every day politicians spend your tax dollars on their vision of what America should have. That's what some Tea Partiers are angry about. In this case, they're yelling, kill the health care bill. But Congress didn't kill it. The bill is passed. Passed along with the Serve America Act and Wall Street reform, plus foreclosure relief and children's health insurance and extended unemployment and, of course, the stimulus. They always spend more. Thomas Jefferson said, it's the natural progress of things for liberty to yield and government to gain ground. But never before outside wartime has government gained so much ground. Just got to stop spending. It's got to be a point to the end of it. For most of the life of America and when we grew the fastest, government spent in today's dollars just a few hundred dollars per person. But today the federal government alone spends $10,000 per American. Total government now eats up 40% of the economy, 40%. Yet the political class always claims they need more. Many people are hurting. Help America's steel workers. Pass funding for black farmers now. I average 20 to 30 meetings a day in my office, and 20 to 30 meetings are people asking for something from the federal government. Usually Paul Ryan is an unusual congressman because he believes government should do less. And that's You're what telling your colleagues, stay out, don't do anything? Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in many of these cases, yes. That's so. not a popular idea around here. Congress listens to testimony all day, and 99 percent comes from people asking for stuff. I propose that Congress pass legislation. I propose that Congress ask Congress. To There's a reason people show up and beg. And it does work and it does pay off. So the people who are connected get the goodies. That's exactly right. And that's what happens in a big government society. Most people like getting free stuff. Yeah. But I think more and more people in America are beginning to wake up to the fact that this thing is coming unglued. When the health care bill was close to passage, Ryan took on the president directly. This bill does not control costs. This bill does not reduce deficits. There's some strong disagreements on the numbers here, Paul. When it was all over, the president smiled and they shook hands, but they came nowhere close to agreeing. It's adding trillions in obligations that we have no means to pay for it. Why? Are your colleagues saying it's okay to spend more? Are you saying they're just stupid or they don't care or they're pandering no, for votes? I think, well, pandering could be a part of it, but I think what it is is they believe that the government should be far larger and far bigger. Stop spending so much. Well, that's something you should tell the Republicans, John. Democratic Congressman Rob Andrews is a friend of Paul Ryan's. He says, don't blame us. President Reagan and both President Bush's spent more than either President Clinton or President Obama. So, so the all of you stop. It. I agree with that. But to assign responsibility to the Democrats for this problem is not factually accurate. It's true that in the past, government has grown just as much, sometimes more, under Republicans. But these days, it's the Democrats who are most eager to spend. There you go. Let's go. Do you ever think government's doing too much? This is what built the country. This is the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. and the Constitution. It's pretty thin, mm -hmm. limited government. I mean, you guys have gone way beyond this. Mm -hmm. I don't think that a social security system is excessive government. I don't think that a Medicare system is excessive government. I don't think that the student loan system, I don't think that's excessive government. We have to make sure that the most vulnerable people are always protected. That protected by a bigger uh, government is the millions, progressives' millions, argument. Millions and millions Columbia University professor tax. Mark Lamont Hill makes their case better than most. We have suffering everywhere. Here he's giving a commencement address in California. Republicans and Democrats, poor people and rich people, middle class, black, white, everybody has to be involved in this struggle. 
What those of us who are at the top of the economic ladder have to do is be willing to make sacrifices that ultimately will benefit everyone. Everyone benefits when we pay a little bit more to create universal health care. Everyone benefits when we pay a little more to have better public education systems. Everyone benefits from that. And by we, you mean government. We always talk about the government like it's this monster in the hills that comes down and hands things out and takes our tax money. We are the government. Well, we, yes. Oh, yeah. Only in libertarian fairy tales. In real life, the government is us. The government is us? In your ideal world, what percent of the economy should government be? For me, housing, health care, and education, are the th in addition to national defense, are things that the government must provide for people. And that's, and that's probably where we differ. So if that means 20%, I'm okay with it. If it means 30%, I'm okay with it. I don't think it will ever get that big. It's already at 40%. I mean, here, here's the graph of the growth of government since the yeah. beginning of the republic. For most of the history of America, it was tiny, less than 5%. Right. Now, Much of that has to do with inefficiency and waste. But you want more. I don't want more inefficiency and waste. Where you and I and where I part ways... It's not in big enough now? It, it is not big enough now. It is not big enough now. Really? It is awfully big. So big that we're now $13 trillion in debt. And yet they keep spending more. There you go. There you go. We are done. But how will we pay for it? We fight most about the income tax. Raising taxes is a recipe for a disaster. But there are so many other taxes. Payroll, corporate, capital gains, estate, sales taxes. In fact, equal to the income tax are dozens of sneaky taxes you may not even know about. You and I pay them all day long. From the moment I wake up and turn on a light. I pay more when I brush my teeth and license my dog. My building pays property and fuel taxes and adds it to my monthly bill. And when I leave home to take the subway to work, I pay the Metropolitan Commuter Transportation Mobility Tax. At work, I make some phone calls. Yes, absolutely. Or get a bite to eat or a soda to drink. Uh, I'd like a smoked turkey in this. When I gas up my car, as much as a quarter of the price of gas is federal, state, and city excise taxes. Heck, people pay sales taxes all day long. So many taxes. I need a drink. I'm lucky I don't smoke. Yet some people say we should pay more. And all those taxes are just fine, say progressives. It costs to live in a civilized society, and we all need to pay our fair share. Our fair share. Progressives say taking from the rich to help the poor is simply the fairest system. No, the fairest system is the one that, that rewards the makers in society as opposed to rewarding the takers in society. Arthur Brooks wrote The Battle, which argues that a fight between free enterprise and big government will shape our future. The way that our culture is moving now is toward more redistribution, toward more progressive taxation, exempting more people from paying anything and loading more of the taxes onto the very top earners in our society. But I'm wealthy. It's kind to take it away from me and give it to people who need it more. Actually, it's not. The government does not create wealth. It uses wealth that's been created by the private sector. Americans are in open rebellion today because the government is threatening to take us from a maker nation into taker nation status.